We've already studied steady state diffusion. That's when the rate of flux isn't changing because the concentration profile is not changing either. It's held constant. It's much more common, however, for these things to be changing in real time. We call this non-steady state diffusion. And there's some really cool examples. I'll post links to some of these, like this one by NerdRage, where he puts a little bit of, uh, let's see, zinc on the surface of a penny, and then he heats it, and it very quickly diffuses because there's a concentration profile. It diffuses into the copper, turning it brass colored. And then if you keep on going, it swallows it up entirely and it changes back to normal copper colored, right? Um, so what you can think of this like is initially our profile might look like the following. If you plot concentration as a function of depth in your material, at the very first moment when you do it, it might have a really sharp profile because most of your stuff's out at the surface. But over time it continues to go outwards like that. Or in other words, this approaches the limit of time going to infinity, right? If you maintain the composition at the surface and deep within the material at these boundary conditions, then it will approach this flat line which we saw from fixed first law, right? So this you can think of as something that will approach fixed first law if it's given long enough time, okay? But many of the processes we care about occur in this limit over here of short periods of time, and so we want to know what those profiles look like, okay? To get those profiles, we need to solve this equation. This is a little bit nastier than the one we saw before. This is dc dt, so it's how the concentration is changing with time, is equal to the diffusion coefficient, the same one that we use for fixed first law, multiplied by the second derivative of the concentration with respect to position, right? So this is a partial derivative equation, right, a PDE. Therefore, uh, in this class, since PDEs is not a prereq, we're not going to learn how to solve this analytically. Um, instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use pre-done solutions for it. There's a lot of solutions that have been written for this, and we're just going to use one off the shelf, right? Um, however, if you were going to solve this, what you would have to do is you'd have to find out what the boundary conditions are and then look up generic solutions for these, which uh, you'll learn how to do later on in your careers, right? Um, so the solution that we're going to learn in this class, and there's others, but one of the more common and useful ones is what's called the semi-infinite solid with constant surface concentration. So you're assuming something that's really, really thick. It goes really deep into the material that the concentration deep within the material and the concentration at the surface are not changing. Those are two of the assumptions we make. So we're going to assume that x equals zero, that is our surface. Um, at t equals zero, that's right before the diffusion begins. At time t equals zero, the composition is equal to the internal composition, C naught, all the way through, from zero all the way to x equals infinity, right? And at all times greater than t equals zero, the composition at the surface is held constant. We're going to call it Cs, right? That doesn't change. And far in the material at x equals infinity, the composition still equals this C0 initial value. Okay, that's the assumptions we have. Um, so if your scenario doesn't match those assumptions, it's possible that this won't be a very good solution for you to model your, com your diffusion coefficient. Nevertheless, that's what we're going to do in this introductory class. If those conditions are met, this is the equation we use right here. You can solve for the composition at any position x, that's cx, right? The composition at any position x will be given by this expression here. You need to know C0, your initial composition all the way through, or concentration all the way through. The surface concentration, x, you're going to have to use the error function and know what the diffusion coefficient and time are. If you know all those things, you can solve for it. You might not have used the error function before. If you haven't, you can read more about it here at this link on uh, Wikipedia. But essentially what it is, it's a function that looks like, it's a function that looks like this. It goes from negative one up to positive one as you go from eh, about negative three to positive three, but you know, it sort of tails off here, at these ends. Um, this just happens to look a lot like the actual diffusion coefficients that we observe in nature. And that's why they use this mathematical function um, you could use others, that's just the one that they use uh, for this one, okay? So if you haven't used the error function before, you can look up these values from a table, right? If the uh, value inside of the error function is z, and that value is 1.3, then the value of the error function would be 0.934, right? You can see that from this chart. If you go to 1.3 over here, 1.3, you're all the way up here at about 1, 0.934, right? So it's just reading off of this plot, However, good question might be is, what do you do if you get a value that's in between those? What if the value of z is 1.35, right? Then what is the error function of z at that point, right? It's somewhere between these two numbers, but how do you know what number to use? 
Well, we need to do something called linear interpolation. You, I'm sure, saw this at some point in math, but let me remind you if you've forgotten how to do it. Let's say we're going to do y minus y0 over x minus x0 equals y1 minus y0 over x1 minus x0. What are all these? x and y are the two things that you're trying to solve for if you have different columns here. y0 and x0 are the values before, right, the lower values. y1 and x1 are the upper values, right? So we could rewrite this as follows, right? So we could go ahead and plug in values here, right? If we're trying to figure it out for 1.35, that means we know what z is. What we want to know is what the error function of z is, right? This is. To solve for that, we would plug in in this case, 1.35 right there. For the z0, we're going to use the value below it, so that's 1.3. Here for z1, we're going to use the value above it, so that's 1.4 minus 1.3. Here we have the error function of z1, that's 0 0.9523 minus the value below, which is 0 0.934. And this again would be 0 0.934. So we could plug all that in and solve for what the error function of z is if z is this value in between those. That's linear interpolation. All right, one more thing we should cover is sometimes you'll hear people talk about a generic or general diffusion distance. So I'm just going to throw out a really big caution. I think that this gets misused a lot. There is no diffusion distance. Some atoms will diffuse really far and others won't diffuse very far, right? So what they'll say is that when x is equal to the square root of dt, that is your generic diffusion distance, right? So big caution to that, because what they're really saying, remember our equation was this, cx minus c naught over cs minus c naught is equal to 1 minus the error function of x over 2 square root of dt. So if you plug in square root of dt for x right there, what you're really taking is the error function of one half, right? So the error function of one half, if you plug in one half here, it's about one half, roughly, you know? So what you're getting, I plotted it here for you, is right about that point. That's your diffusion distance if you use that expression. Realize that some of your things have traveled much further and others haven't traveled quite as far, right? But that is the generic uh, diffusion equation. Now let's do an example of non-steady state diffusion. It says the following. Boron is pre-deposited at 4.5 times 10 to the 20th atoms per centimeter cubed on a silicon wafer with an initial concentration of 5e to the 15 atoms per centimeter cubed. Conditions are, so what they're describing is this. You've got this wafer, and right here at the surface, you implant 4.5 times 10 to the 20 borons per centimeter cubed. But this silicon deep within it has a value of 5 times 10 to the 15th boron atoms per centimeter cubed, right? So it was already grown doped, but you're adding much more dopant right at the surface doing, doing this pre-deposition process. Then it says the conditions are 30 minutes at 1223 Kelvin with a diffusion coefficient that's given here in micrometers per hour. Calculate the concentration at the diffusion length. Okay, so we can do this. What it's asking us to do is solve for Cx. So we know that Cx minus C0 over Cs minus C0 is equal to 1 minus the error function of x over 2 square root of dt. Now they're saying to solve it at the diffusion distance, so we're going to plug in dt for that value. Okay, so if we plug that in, then this becomes the error function of one-half. Error function of one-half. So if the error function of one-half, let's use our table up here. Z is one-half, so the error function of one-half is 0.5205. All right, so we're almost there. We can now say that Cx, which we're solving for, is going to be equal to 1 minus 0 0.5205 multiplied by the surface concentration minus the initial, so that's going to be multiplied by 4.5e to the 20 minus 5e to the 15. And then we're going to add to that whole thing our surface concentration. 
5e to the 15. When I plug all that in, I find that the surface con that the composition at this distance is equal to 2.15 times 10 to the 20th boron atoms per centimeter cubed. Okay? So this was a relatively simple one because we didn't even need the diffusion composition or time because that was built into the x value, right? It's much more common that they'll say 3 microns in. If this was 3 microns, then you would need to plug in d and t and make sure that these units are the same and then solve for it. But this was a simpler one in this example. I have some other harder ones in uh, that I've worked at you can take a look at where we work it through for non-trivial examples.